Well, there it is. Quite a build-up, isn't it, from uh, Michael Buffer, who uh, does a bit of modelling, as you could expect, in his spare time. And uh, it's a long way from far off Stafford when he was the master of ceremonies for uh, Simpson and Tate. And there's the challenger, Tony Tubb. Been a bit of criticism, obviously, about his weight. 238 pounds. So Michael Tyson, then, uh, he's the man. 33 unbeaten fights. So then Tubb's career record, then, he's only lost one of 25, and that was a very close one that ITV covered with Tim Witherspoon. And one judge actually gave a draw on that one, and he stopped 15. And it, uh, well, I wonder about that waist measurement of his at times. I think they must have measured it when he was a little boy, but there you go. Well, he's loosening up, uh, as always, as they come into the ring there. It's, uh, it's quite natural. And, uh, well, his, his uh, entourage, at least Odell Hadley, who was in his corner, wasn't very happy about having a New York referee, Arthur McCanty. I didn't think that was a very shrewd move on his part. He could hardly expect somebody from Cincinnati, Ohio, to be a referee. Well, fair enough for the Japanese crowd. They're giving uh, Tubbs a fairly good hand there, although Tyson has been their man, their big hero. And now, ladies and gentlemen, coming towards the ring, the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Boy Tyson! So there he is, no dressing gown. The old throwback to the bare knuckle fighter, unbeaten now in 33... 33 fights and he stopped 29 of them fifth defense now one against trevor burbick of course and then the unification against tony tucker and there he really is sweating profusely already isn't he he works out so hard in the dressing room I tell you, he's having a hard fight getting into the ring, it would look like Tyson. I mean, the Japanese have made such a hero of him, and obviously they're expecting heroism from him, but it, it might not be necessary. On the other hand, uh, Tubbs was picked by the Japanese promoters as a man who's liable to go a long way, if not the distance in this fight. They didn't want a repeat of the George Foreman and Joe Roman fight that took place here back in 73 that only went one round, and they thought Tubbs had the durability. Takes it all in his stride, doesn't he, uh, Tyson? Just another night's work for him. He gives that impression anyway, but there's no doubt that he's got a bit of nervousness in there somewhere, maybe on his own performance rather than worried about the opposition. And then when you see the tail of the tape, well, he's obviously got to give away a few years there, Tony Tubbs, and uh, I can't believe that waist measurement of his. I think he's put on quite a bit since then. But uh, he's got the advantage anyway of being 6-4 against 5-11. So while they're getting the introduction there, you can see Kevin Rooney, who's worked with Tyson the whole time. And this is Japanese commissioner just... Uh, reading out the, well, not, not the rules, but the official greeting to both fighters. I would have thought now that they really want to get on with it, as they say, uh, ready to rumble in the words of the master of ceremonies there. Tony Tubbs, he's talked very pretty confidently before this fight. He was one of the world's best amateur fighters. He only weighed 212 pounds those days. Good afternoon, this championship bout is a presentation of Taking Boxing Promotions, President Akiko Honda. It is sanctioned by the Japan Boxing Commission, Commissioner Makoto Hosaka, and the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman. The World Boxing Association is represented by Championship Committee Chairman, Dr. Elias M. Cordova, Jr. The ringside supervisor is Gabriel Peña Carecano. He's the WBC General Counsel. 
The three judges are Larry Rosadilla of the United States, Masakutsu Yuchida of Japan, and Ken Morita of Japan. And working for the 78th time in a world title belt is the referee, Arthur Mercanti of the United States. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to all the millions and millions of boxing fans watching around the world, welcome to the Tokyo Dome, the Big Egg, right here in one of the greatest cities in the world, Tokyo, Japan. I would like to introduce in, this, in the ring at this time a man known as one of the premier promoters in the world of boxing, Mr. Don King. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble 12 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, He's wearing his boxing trunks and weighing 238 and one quarter pounds with a professional record of 24 victories, 15 by knockout, and only one defeat from Cincinnati, Ohio. He is the second ranked heavyweight in the world and a former heavyweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Tony TNT Cole. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the solid black trunks and weighing 216 and one quarter pounds from Catskill, New York, which is the hometown of the late great trainer of champions, Customato. He brings a professional record of 33 victories without a loss, 29 KOs, including 25 KOs in five rounds or less and 15 in the first round alone. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the undisputed, the undefeated, heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Boy Tyson! Well, a great reception for Tyson. I mean, they've almost thought it was the return of the old movie star Godzilla, the way they've treated this fellow here, and uh, he's been totally overwhelmed by it. Mike and Tony, you both received instructions earlier in the day, and therefore you know the rules. I wish you both an awful lot of luck now. Return to your corners to await the starting bell. Good luck. So referee Arthur McCanty there, public could hear what he was saying. He wishes them both luck. They both know the rules, and certainly McCanty does. And I tell you, it's, uh, well, it's a happy night in many ways for my co-commodator here today, uh, Jim Watt, because it was Arthur McCanty who refereed uh, his contest when he won the championship of the world, and uh, strangely enough, when he lost it to Alex Aguilo, who was also here at ringside. So there you are, all the dignitaries are finished now, and uh, the Muhammad Ali's are at ringside, Sugar Ray Leonard's, so it's, it's a great event now. Are we to worry about the weight of Tony Tubbs or not? Because he's always been a porky looking fighter. He started off at about 212 pounds when he turned pro, and he went up to 244 at one time when he lost to Witherspoon, the only defeat. But for a big man, he's got fast hands. It's just a question now whether the, the durability can stay in there with this uh, absolute murderous puncher, Tyson. 15 in the first round. Tubbs is the WBA number two, and this is for both the WBC and WBA championships, not for the IBF, as it's not over the 15-round course. And there's some silly talk by the IBF that they might strip Tyson. Well, they'd lose a bit of credibility with me if they do that. Jim, we've seen quite a bit of Tubbs. I mean, he, for a big man, he can move. Yeah, Tubbs is a very smart boxer, very talented. He's the type of fighter to give Tyson trouble. And strangely enough, this is about the quietest uh, first half minute of a fight we've seen Tyson in. Normally, he really comes out bombing, but he seems to have settled down here. Maybe he realises this fight could go a few rounds. Uh, I don't know. 
Well, whatever happens now, certainly I always got the impression that T Tubbs has been sold a bit short. It's true he let himself down a few times, but he, you can't do more than keep winning except for the Witherspoon one. But that was the first right hand now that's got in from Tyson now. Is this a strong chin that we talk about uh, of Tubbs going to be standing up to this sort of stuff? Well, remember that uh, two others, Tony Tucker and Bone Crusher Smith, have stayed the course. It's obviously Tubbs planned him. He's going to try and do a bit of uh, outsmarting. I mean, that is, that's his move. He may not wish to, well, he'd like to outpunch Tyson, but I think he's going to try and do it with being clever. Yeah, I think he has to try to score at long range and just uh, stop Tyson from working up close. It's pointless trying to trade the power with Mike Tyson, but uh, if he can pin him on the jab, he's landed a couple of jabs and a couple of nice left hooks already, Tubbs. And uh, any time Tyson's got close, he's tied him up. Well, as Tubbs was saying, he's, he's only as good as what he can hit. Come on, it'll be good. No, it won't. It will. It won't. It will. She'll be there. Who? Joyce Oliphant. Joyce Oliphant? She won't be there. She will. She's probably forgotten all about it by now. She won't. I know she won't. Look, look, look. She won't be there. Look, I'm not going, okay? You can try. What? You're Cavalier, it's all right. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Yeah. The Cavalier SRI from Vauxhall. Once driven, forever smitten. So into the second round, it's always a bit of a relief, Jim, to get that first one over, isn't it? The people getting their money's worth, and uh, really they're going to—they deserve it because you know, in yen it's about uh, what a hundred thousand uh, yen to a ringside seat. I make that about four hundred and thirty-five pounds. So they want something for their money. It's going to be the stalking routine, as always, with Mike Tyson. I think probably the Japanese, if not uh, our viewers, Jim, are a bit surprised that uh, Tubbs is as smart as he is, but for how long? Yeah, well, Tubbs has had a little bit of success with the jab, a very, very smart jab. He's pulling his head out of distance, and uh, he, he's using his reach advantage. Uh, we haven't really seen Tyson. As I say, this is about as quiet as we've seen Tyson start, but uh, that, I know that won't last long. He's working well inside. If you remember early on, Tyson's in, in fighting wasn't considered that great, but he's looking good doing that. He, watch for him bringing that area, bringing the uppercut there. I was a big fan of Tubbs when he was an amateur. He was officially the world number two behind Teofilio Stevenson of Cuba. And it was just a pity that uh, he finished up with, well, almost the contours of a channel swimmer in recent years. But uh, he appears to have buckled down quite a bit now, anyway. He's... So now he's going to use that 22 pounds advantage, Jim, isn't he, laying on a bit like that? Yeah, but I thought he, he was doing better at long range. He was making Tyson miss, and his own left hands were pretty accurate. See, Tyson, this, the destroyer, has got to work on this fellow all the time because it may not be one punch that would do it as he, as he did when he turned Larry Holmes over. The one punch started the sort of landslide. Oh, what's that? Good left hand punch right through Tyson's guard, that went. It's 
getting some he's getting shot his body's broken up on him jim and it's just as well he missed him with that one it was amazing we saw, we saw it happening but it still came as a surprise there was a big duel what happened there jim there was a punch inside reggie which shook him up badly but didn't seem to have an effect but then as the referee broke them up, he keeled over, his legs had gone. It was a short little punch inside, a tremendous little punch. Hopefully we'll see it on replay. But uh, it didn't have an instant effect, but boy, it was a cracker. Yeah, what's his whole body breaking up there? Uh, and it really, you really thought, well, he's, he's going to totter a bit, but he'll be OK. I mean, remember this, he's only ever taken one brief count in his life early on and got up to win tubs. But when this fellow hits them, they stay hit, there's no doubt about it, in the second round. And the doctors are saying, you stay there until we tell you to get up. Uh, and if it was body punches, Jim, then uh, it, he'll be OK. No, it was a head punch. There was, there was a cracking little hook landed as they were up close. And when the referee pushed them apart, you could see Tubbs' legs had gone. I see there's blood coming from his right eye as well at the moment. But uh, as, as the referee broke them up, you could see his legs weren't working properly. Now, Ooh. let's have another look at that now. As it, he had his back to our commentary position there. That was the left hook then that started the roll. And that was when he couldn't control his legs there. We thought it was a body punch at first. But what a punch that must have been to knock that big man over. See, I think actually there was a punch before that actually happened. There was a punch when they were inside. See, they, they, that, that one's shaking him badly. Just as well, that one missed. It would have torn his head from his shoulders. And here's another angle of it, Jim. As you say, the body punch had already come in before this, hadn't it? I mean, he really did lose total control there, as if he was walking on cotton wool. So, Jim, we might see, see a bit more coming in there, you see. Again, on the uh, top of the head, which takes a bit of the sense that that was the dig in the ribs that we were talking about, wasn't it? The right-hand punch. Well, obvious recovery there, but nobody's more surprised uh, than him. Uh, and I think the crowd, the way he went, as you say, he also got cut in that uh, exchange of, well not exchange i mean the fusillade of punches that uh, tyson coming in and it's quite badly cut too This man is some fighter, isn't he? He looks unstoppable at the moment. I mean, Tubbs was doing quite well for a round and a half, Jim, and then uh, good night, curtains. Yeah, well, Tubbs looked apart. He, he was posing a few problems. He was landing nice jabs. He was keeping out of trouble. Even inside, he was trading with Tyson. He was really giving us a show. And then one punch. I mean, you can see he's completely recovered now, completely clear again. But uh, that one punch just uh, completely knocked him right out of the fight. Well, he gave the crowd uh, what was expected, something spectacular. I'm wondering now whether f at the back of this big arena they quite wondered uh, what had gone on there. So now they're trying to, well, not clear the ring, but get into an interview situation with uh, my colleague there, Larry Merchant, is uh, trying to get the champ. Seeing that Tony Tubbs went right at you and tested you, and you were a little bit too strong for him, but he was effective until you hurt him. Well. He was effective because I planned it that way. I was looking for the opening because I planned for him to run. And then when I saw he he came such a easy target to hit, I was just planning and planning. And he had his hand, hands up very high. I was surprised that he had his hands up so high. And so I started hitting to the body and bringing it up in the middle. And then as soon as he brought his hands up, I saw his eyes and I aimed right for his eyes. 
He said that nobody had ever gone to your body before and he wanted to try you there. He did hit, hit you a few b blows there. Did he hurt you at all, not distract at all. you even? Not at all. My, my mission is to go and destroy and not to let anything get involved. You get punched, you get hurt. I refuse to be hurt, knocked down, and knocked out. I can't lose. I refuse to lose. What was your response to the audience here, which is kind of quiet compared to the crowds in America? Did you I, hear anything or not, not at all? Anything? Not at all. I knew there were people scratching me when I was coming through, but I had such an intense tunnel vision. I just my, my objective was just to get in there and get my hands on my opponent. Well, not the fast and furious performance that we've come to expect from uh, Mike Tyson, but what a stunning delayed action we had to that punch from Tony T.N. Tubbs. I think we all thought that Tony Tubbs would actually last a little longer, but there we are. Right, the next time we shall see him in action is against Mike, Spike, Mike Spinks, but from all of us here in Tokyo for the moment, it's goodbye.